This is my dressing room. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your opener, Portland, Maine's very own Ian Stewart. Hey guys, a little loud. How are we doing tonight? Good? You guys ready for a comedy show? I'm your opener. I'm up here. Looking terrible. That's what's happening right now. Awful. You can tell that the water and the oil have already separated my body. That's not good, right? If I took my shirt off right now, my torso would look like a pale gummy bear's face. That's what I'm trying to say, guys. Just frowning at you. He used to be a cool guy, too. He used to be a hipster. Gained 40 pounds, and I'm a townie. It's not as good. Not as good. Anyone smoke pot here in Portland, Maine? No. Calm down. Woo! Those are, those, those are too nice of lungs for a smoker. Come on now. I, uh, I've got my medical marijuana card here in Portland, Maine. Yeah. Uh, I have it for digestive issues because we look like a fat kid rock. Your tum tum hurts. Uh, and so uh, my parents had a, my parents on a farm in Gorham, Maine, right? Really cool, nice little spot. And uh, after uh, their big 4th of July feast this year on the farm, I went behind their chicken coop and lit up an after dinner mint. You know what I'm talking about, guys? You know, a little after dinner mint. Having a good time, having a good time with the after dinner mint. And I see my five year old cousin running towards the house, running towards me very quickly. So I try to snuff out the joint, but it's not quick enough because he comes rolling up on me. He's like, Cousin Ian. What's that smell? <laughs> I gotta be cool cousin Ian too. So I'm like, don't worry little buddy. It's just a skunk. <laughs> so he calls up to my mom. He's like, on Ann! Ian's smoking weed with skunks! <laughs> You're a little narc. <laughs> no, it's okay though. Uh, my parents are, are hippies, so they don't care. Uh, any parents hippies here? You guys have hippie parents? <laughs> One guy. My parents are aging hippies. They're in their 60s. Um, my mom is taking akinasia and ginseng and fish oil to live longer. My dad's taking LSD to live for eternity. <laughs> He's going forever, bro. The first time I was ever caught with marijuana, has anyone here been caught? Have you guys been caught with marijuana, sir? No, never. No, God, no. You look at every person that's thrown me out of L.O.B. and so there's that, okay. Fair enough. I was caught when I was 14 years old, but I was not smoking it. Not smoking it, I was just taking a shower. It was my fifth of the day, because I was 14, having a good time. <laughs> Enjoying that shower. <laughs> and uh, while I'm showering, my mom's going through my room with the Portland PD, just crashing things over, searching through things, looking for something. And she finds a little tiny Altoids wintergreen container filled with like the fish flakiest, crappiest pot in the world. And she freaks out, freaks out. She grabs a container, she runs into the bathroom where I'm sudsing up. Um, she grabs me by the arm and drags me stark naked into the kitchen where my dad's waiting, fuming mad, right? And she's got the Altoids container, she's kind of waving around like a bad grave, you know? Is this your pot? Is this your gosh darn pot, Ian? Before I can even answer, my dad jumps in with, and it's not even good shit! <laughs> Two things, Dad. A, I'm 14. B, I stole it from you. Get a better dealer, Dad. Good God. <laughs> so, uh, who here is from Portland? <laughs> a smattering. All right, all right. Well, welcome to Portland, guys. Boat is right down the street. Um, I live on Grant Street. Do you guys know where Grant Street is? One kid buys crack cocaine. There you go. Yeah. Grant Street. Um, if you guys don't know, Grant Street is a rough and tumble area of Portland, Maine. And it's getting worse and worse. Well, I don't know. It's the same. Um, but it is what it is. And my buddy was talking to me, and he was like, you know, Grand Street's a little crazy. You might need some protection. You need something to protect yourself, right? Um, and I was thinking about it. I'm not, I don't have anything in my house like that. 
And I don't know if you guys know this, uh, but Paula Page, uh, we now have like these new laws where we can just like walk around with guns in our pants like a DMX music video. Did you know that? Like that's what we can do now? And they we just have guns all the time. And so I was thinking, maybe I should try and go get a gun, right? Let's see what happens. I don't know anything about it. So I go to Cabela's, knowing nothing about guns, walk up to the counter, it's like, hey man, I don't know what to do, what do I do to get a gun? He's like, well, you don't need a permit, you don't need a license, It'll take you 15 minutes to clear that background check. It's like, so I can get a gun in 15 minutes? He's like, you can get a gun in 15 minutes, load it with hollow point bullets, and then drive around with it in your car in the state of Maine. Yeah, goddamn is right. My girlfriend was there right next to me, right? She's kind of like talking on my shoulder. She's like, Ian, you're not really a gun guy. You're more of like a dog guy. Why don't we go to the Animal Refuge League in Westbrook and maybe we can pick out, maybe we can pick out some protection there, right? A nice dog. All right, hell yeah. Are you snapping applause to me, sir? Thank you. I am doing poetry right now, I guess. Thank you. And so we go to the Animal Refuge League, right? And I've never adopted a dog from the Animal Refuge League, so I don't know what to do. And uh, we go around the pens, and uh, we find this beautiful Rottweiler, 100-pound Rottweiler, named Thor. So you know it's good right there. <laughs> I go to the counter, and I was like, hey, we're interested in Thor, but I've never, you know, bought a dog. What do I need to do? She's like, well, you're going to need a license. You're going to need a permit. It's going to take you five days to clear that background check. <laughs> I step back and I was like, I'm going to get a gun! <laughs> I think she was nervous because she thought I meant I was coming back. <laughs> Give me all your dogs! All the homeless dogs now! And the cats! Bring in the cats! And uh, so I went with a dog. I went with a dog as opposed to the gun. And I love my dog. Anybody dog dog owners here? This is a dog crowd. Heck yeah. Awesome. Uh, love my dog. Love my dog, but he's a shelter dog, so he's a little... Yeah, right? We know. We all have that friend like, hey, don't pet him. I'm like, what? <laughs> all right. Um, and so I take my dog, again, show the dog, weird guy, I take him to the Hinkley Dog Park in South Portland every single day. Do you guys know Hinkley Dog Park? Yeah, a couple. It's a lot of questions. That's what I'm asking tonight, guys. Um, Hinkley is my favorite dog park of all time. I love it. Um, it's a nice, big, long track, two ponds in the middle. And for the most part, around noon, it's desolate. I can kind of go there with my crazy dog. Nothing crazy happens. Um, but one night in particular, not even one night, one day at noon, maybe two weeks ago, I was walking through Hinkley Dog Park, right, having a good time, no one was around. We're halfway through the trail, and about halfway through, this nice little boxer puppy comes bounding from behind me and meets my dog. And my dog and that dog kind of go tit for tat for smelling and stuff like that. My dog, being the dick that he is, barks him off, right? And the little tiny boxer goes running from where he came. I look back, and this owner's just marching up the trail, right? A real manly man. You know what I mean? Like one of those guys that doesn't watch football, he listens to it on an AM radio while he whittles shit. You know what I'm talking about? Like a, like a manly man. Very Clint Eastwood looking, Gran Turismo kind of thing. I hear from behind me, shitty dogs! I turn around. Super sorry, man. That's my fault. My dog's territorial. Super, super sorry. My fault. If he keeps going. No! Shitty dogs shouldn't be allowed at this dog park. And maybe I wasn't feeling it. You know, it was early in the morning. I just, I don't know. I turned around and I think, I said something that we could all agree that is really dumb. I turn around and go, sorry your dog's weak. <laughs> Like we're playing basketball in the 90s, just like. <laughs> but he got serious. He was like, what you say to me? And that's when I knew he was looking for a fight, right? And so I gotta be the bigger man, I gotta get out of the situation, just let him be, you know, his grumpy old self. 
So I pick up the pace, try to move faster, but he's moving faster too, kind of following me. And his dog and my dog are still not getting along. And they go back and forth a little bit, and my dog again barks off this little boxer puppy. And I hear him from behind me. He goes, shitty dogs! No dog attacks my dog! And I want to say this 100%. I respect my elders. I love my mom and my papa. All right? So bear with me. But I turned around and I pointed at him like I was baby who was pointing out a hit. And I yelled, Fuck you, old man! He didn't say anything. He just stared at me, and without turning his head, he turned his body like he was Robocop. <laughs> Went down to his waist, and pulled out a gun. Yeah. And this wasn't like he went to like a kiddery training post and they're like, this would be a good self-defense weapon. You know what I mean? No. This was every gun you've ever seen in like a Dirty Harry movie. You know what I mean? It had the patina of death on it. Does that make sense? A real gun. Now, he doesn't point it at me, but he brings it up to his head and starts clicking it against his head like the gun's doing the thinking. And I'm in quite the pickle right now, aren't I? Now here's the thing, I feel like there's three options at this road that I'm, I've just hit, right? I can either exasperate the situation, right? And kind of like be the tough guy, but maybe, bah, I'm done. Maybe I can play the victim. Oh, dude, don't shoot me. What if he gets off on that? Bah, done. What I've decided, my third option, is to make this guy my friend immediately. Can we all agree that's probably the best option on this, right? Yeah. So I'm looking at him, and I'm trying to think of something like, what can I say to this dude to make him my friend in like one sentence? And he's an angry old man with a gun. And so I lie to him, I go, uh, I voted for Trump. <laughs> and his, his look softens, he puts the gun away, points at me and goes, we're gonna make America great again. <laughs> car to scrape the I'm with her bumper sticker off my bumper <laughs> because he got a gun and I went with a dog. <laughs> I like it when someone doesn't laugh, just give me a nod of approval. So this is true, this is not a joke, but uh, uh, this month we're celebrating my girlfriend beating cancer after eight months. She's eight months. Thirty years old, she was diagnosed with stage two lymphoma, and uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you're diagnosed with cancer in Maine, they immediately give you a medical marijuana card because marijuana is awesome for chemotherapy. It's awesome, it's awesome. Yeah, who, who was right? And uh, because she had lymphoma, she couldn't smoke it. Right? Uh, she had to eat it. And I know that, like, I know that I, I know that I look like I've named a litter of kids after the Wu Tang Clan. Like, I know where, kind of like a lion that owes alimony. Got it. I know. But well, my girlfriend's a very straight-laced, cool, even person, works at a school, not a smoker at all. And, uh, you know, she was like, maybe the day of chemotherapy, you could make some magic brownies for us, and we could go upstairs and watch Game of Thrones until we pass out. Perfect, that's not a good day, yeah, right? We can do that. And so the day comes, right? And uh, she goes upstairs, I make the, uh, the pan of brownies for her. I cut one brownie out for her. Couple for myself. <laughs> Go upstairs, and I give her a brownie. We start Game of Thrones. And uh, she eats a half of the brownie. She eats a half of the brownie, and maybe 45 minutes into Game of Thrones, I look at her, and she starts making this noise. <clears throat> and she starts rocking back and forth like this. I guess the only way I can describe it is like the way that Ray Charles sings the Christmas album. Does that make sense? Just... <laughs> and she stops. And she goes, oh my god, Ian. I eat a half of a brownie. And I can't feel anything. <laughs> 
how many brownies did you eat? <laughs> He'll look at her and say, I ate seven brownies. <laughs> she goes, oh my God. <laughs> now I thought, she said like, oh my God, Ian, you weed warrior you. I can't believe you ate so many brownies like a champion. A cannabis ninja, pow. But instead she goes, oh my god, you're going to get diabetes. <laughs> Just patted myself and nodded. A little nervous, a little nervous about, about the diabetes, so I went to the doctor, right? Went to the doctor. That's not the joke, guys, calm down. He's never been to a doctor. Went to a doctor and uh, had the physical. The doctor looked a little nervous after the physical. I'm sitting on the little parchment paper. And uh, there's tension growing in the room. So I have to break the tension. I was like, Doc, give it to me straight. Do I have type 2 diabetes? She just goes, You have two types of diabetes. <laughs> you have all of the diabetes. <laughs> I gotta start running more, I think. I don't know. So I found a bag of weed yesterday, guys. Give it up. Yeah. Yeah. Funny bag of weed. Guy all in white. You'll like this. <laughs> From you tonight? After the show? I feel like I'm not gonna be the person that finds it, but there's gonna be like nine other dudes that are like 14. They're like, dude, are you holding? You're, you're a holic? What? Are these like future lyrics? What's going on right now? I'm a hologram. All right, there you go. Yes, sir. <laughs> Don't shake me after this. All right. So I found a bag of weed, and uh, finding a bag of weed is better than finding money, because if I found money, I would just turn that money into a bag of weed. So really, God circumvented sort of the events, guys. Get it for God, yeah. Nice guy. What happened is I went out and did some errands, right? Had a couple good, fun errands. Came back to the house with my groceries, and in the threshold of my doorway was this big, beautiful bag of weed, right? Picked it up, sniffed it, smelled like two hippies fucking in a berry patch. You know what I'm talking about? Like, pretty good stuff, right? So I bring it up to my apartment, I start rolling it up, start smoking on it, but it's a sativa blend. And sativa's kind of messing with my head, right? Yeah, exactly, well, messing with my head. And I start worrying about this, I live on Grant Street. I don't know where this bag of weed's from. There's probably like some homeless guy pissing on my building and it fell out of his pocket, or someone was banging a hooker and it fell out of his pocket, or someone was pissing on a hooker, I don't know how I got the bag of weed, but now I have this bag of weed, and I'm freaking out. But what happens, Portland, when you get too high? You smoke more weed. So I smoked that entire bag to the dome by myself. But what I learned from the entire experience, before you go ahead and you smoke that entire bag of weed that you found that afternoon, make sure it's not the bag of weed you actually dropped earlier that morning. <laughs> because now I'm out of weed. <laughs> Do you guys want to hear about the gathering of the Juggalos? Yes. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> the 13 year old kid's like, I've only seen videos. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, I performed at the gathering of the Juggalos last year. Uh, dream gig. And uh, if you don't know what the gathering of the Juggalos is, uh, gathering of the Juggalos is a big festival put on by the band the Insane Clown Posse. Uh, and they're noted as the most hated band in the world. Right? Oh. Yeehaw. Whoop whoop is right. If you've never seen a juggalo, it's every person you've ever driven past smoking in a gas station parking lot. That's a juggalo. And there's no actual, there's, none of them juggle anything outside of drug addictions and shitty jobs. You know what I mean? It's... Oh, I'll get to that, sir. So, I get to the gig, and the stage manager, the only thing he says to me, is, hey, if the crowd gives you drugs, you have to take them or they'll hate you. 
was like, I've been to college, I can do this, let's get it, let's, let's, let's go, let's do this. And uh, I actually had a really fun set, I had a really good time, and as soon as I got off stage, there was a girl with her hand out, and there was a little hit of acid. And I haven't done acid in a very long time, probably since college, 10 years. And I take the hit of acid, put it on my tongue, and as soon as I do this, all the other jugglers notice that I'm a cool guy, right? Ooh, the con will do some drugs. And uh, do you guys know what lean is? Yeah, lean or like a scissor. What it is is codeine and Sprite mixed together. It's like a rapper drink. And these guys had codeine mixed with blue fago, which is like this really cheap, gross soda. And instead of drinking it out of the cup, they have a funnel, like we're at a frat house, and they're just funneling blue fago lean into people's mouths. And I find myself at the end of the funnel, right? <laughs> Ate some acid, blue fago lean. Having a pretty good time, I'm not gonna lie, having a pretty good time. Go see some wrestling. After the wrestling, we go and uh, we check out this tent called the Mike Busey Show. Um, and Mike Busey is a big, big guy, just yelling into the microphone uh, while a DJ plays Turn Down For What and just has strippers dancing on the stage. That's the whole show, right? But I'm having a good time. And earlier that night, the metal band Guar played, and Guar really likes fake blood, and they've got all these big fake blood cannons, and apparently Mike Busey procured one, and um, uh, the ending of their show was a, a stripper, completely got naked, bent over, and they shot her in the butt with this fake blood cannon. Now, I didn't see any of the fake blood cannon, all I heard was a pop, and then me, covered in blood, like when I was at the Gallagher show, just <laughs> And I hate blood. I don't even like red Kool-Aid. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't like blood at all. And I'm high on acid and fagoline. And I just start freaking out. Oh my god! Oh my god! And the only thing I can do at that point is to take off all of my clothes, except for my boxers, and use it as like a towel. But this blood's really sticky, so it's just streaking down my body, so it looks like a Viking tampon, you know what I mean? Just not a good, just <sighs> And I figure, the only thing I can do to get clean is I have to run a mile to the parking lot and get my wet wipes, because porta potties are disgusting. <laughs> I gotta get clean that way. So covered in blood, high out of my mind, naked, I just start running, screaming, ah! towards the parking lot. Ah! Halfway through the trail, I see two jugglers running on the trail, and I hear them as I pass, and one of them goes, man, I wish I wasn't having that much fun. <laughs> so I'm going back this year, guys. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Thanks. I, uh, I lucid dream occasionally, and I've got a buddy that lucid dreams. And I was talking with him. He said the last time that he lucid dreamt, he dreamt when he knew he was in the dream, he dreamt to be a surgeon. And as a surgeon, he went around the world and just cured all of the ails. I thought it was awesome. I was like, but every time I lose a dream, I just fly around and fuck things. <laughs> like, I think it's noble that you're going to go around and be a doctor, but I flew to the moon and made love to a woman made of mouths. So. <laughs> Do you guys remember scrambled porn? <laughs> Alright, so scramble porn, if you don't know, back in like the early 2000s, late 90s, you'd get like a block of 60 cable channels, then after 60 channels, it'd be like all these scrambling channels, right? Channels 88, 89, 90, with these scrambling porn channels, right? 10 o'clock, the sound would come on, so you'd hear all like the moans and the right? So one night in particular, I'm down in the basement, channel 88, 10 o'clock, the moans and groans are crazy. Ugh, ah! Ooh, ah. I'm having a good time, right? And occasionally, if you were lucky, the screen would unscramble for just a bit. You'd see like a hard body or like a kitty or something like that, right? And this night is not unlike the rest. Ooh, ah, ooh. The screen unscrambles, but it turns out I'm not watching porn. I'm watching pay-per-view wrestling. <laughs> Which is why I love Jake the Snake so much now. DDT. Have you guys ever gotten drugs so good that it came with a movie recommendation? <laughs> One dude. Alright, hell yeah. 
So what happened to me is uh, I, uh, I went out to my buddy's house and I got some mushrooms. When I got the mushrooms, he was like, dude, when you do these, you either need to watch across the universe or the doors. And I own both movies, but I've never seen either movie. I own both movies because I go to Bull Moose, and I buy those 10 packs for a dollar of DVDs, you know what I'm talking about? I just get all the DVDs and never watch them. But I knew I had them because Across the Universe and the Doors are like the only ones that come in those packs. So, all right. You can do that. So watch them Across the Universe. So I get home, pop the mushrooms. And I don't know if you guys know this, but when you eat mushrooms, while you're waiting for the high to kick in, you're just supposed to roll joints. That's all you're supposed to do is roll some joints. And this stuff was working a lot faster than I had planned. Because while I was rolling joints, I looked at the wall, I was like, I don't know if you should move like that. You know what I mean? Just... So I got to make a beeline to my bedroom, grab Across the Universe, and throw it into my DVD player. I think it's Across the Universe, right? Throw it in. The movie starts. And it starts with a Beatles song. It starts with, all you need is love. How high are you guys? Good Lord. All you need is love. Better, better, all right. And I get raptured in this movie. Super, super high, having a good time watching this movie. And while watching this movie, I find out that this movie is about love lost and love gained. And there's this portion where these two people fall in love because they don't speak the they don't speak the same language, but they still fall in love regardless. And then, you know, a little ways down through the movie, they meet up again and they have learned each other's language so they can tell each other that they love each other. And I just am so raptured and high on mushrooms, I just start crying. Like, I'll never find love like that, you know, just oh my god. I start crying so hard that my roommate is, you know, playing World of Warcraft, I'm sure, comes in and he goes, dude, why are you crying? I was like, I'm high on mushrooms. And he's like, why are you watching Love Actually? I thought it was the doors. You know? Um, so I was recently in a movie. Do you guys watch Netflix and Hulu and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah? Netflix fans. Um, so I should be in a horror movie that's coming out around like the fall on Netflix and Hulu. Um, and I've been in three movies, but this is my first movie where I had a speaking role. And um, I got the I got the role literally by happenstance. What happened is one of the producers from the movie was on a show that I was on that never got picked up a couple years back, and I was making movies. He hits me up on the cell phone. He's like, hey man, we're making a horror movie and we're gonna shoot a couple scenes in Bath, Maine, and we need a homeless guy. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> He's like, you don't need to do anything, just bring your normal clothes. <laughs> Done. And I'm pumped. This is a big stand up This is a big deal. You know what I mean? Like I get to that say some lines in the movie. So me and my girlfriend, we go out that night to celebrate and we have some food on Market Street that doesn't sit well with me. Actually, it's so bad that I have the worst food poisoning of my life for an entire week. But I had to be on the set the next day to do this movie, right? And so the next morning comes, and if you've ever been on a movie set, you've got to be there the entire time you're filming. So my line wasn't until 5 o'clock in the afternoon, but I had to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning. I felt like garbage. So I get there at 8 o'clock, and I'm just kind of sulking around, you know what I mean? And uh, I couldn't get, there was no place to be like discreet about the issue because the bathroom and the dressing room shared a room, and I just, you know, couldn't be cool. And um, so I'm just suffering through it the entire time. And uh, finally, 5 o'clock comes, the director comes uh, for me, he's like, hey, you ready to do your lines? Absolutely. And so what my job is as the homeless guy, it's me and the two main characters. And the two main characters have to audition for, uh, for these parts. One of them has been in multiple Steven Spielberg movies. Another is one of the daughters of the show Americans on FX. And these are real actresses and then just a guy that happens to look homeless locally. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I know my place. And so what I am, I'm in part of like this jump scare montage where the two girls are going down and going down an alleyway and things are jumping at them while it's happening. So they go down the alleyway and someone throws slop in front of them, and then a bird gets released, and then I, as the homeless guy, pop out of the trash and I harass them. I go, hey! 
do either of you girls got a dollar? And they respond with, no, I'm sorry, we're fresh out. And then I respond with, whores! And drop back on the tracks, right? That's my big movie. Thank you. <laughs> so again, if you look back on a movie set, they make you do the scene over and over and over again. The director comes around, you know, and um, he tells you know tells you what he likes, what he doesn't like, and um, maybe the fifteenth scene, like the last one we're going to shoot. He comes up to me, he's like, "Man, you've been doing really well. Really like it. I just really want to feel." the grime come off you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to feel like you're dirty. You know what I mean? Like, I really want to feel it. And I feel awful and I'm lost at the time. I just want to get out of there. So it's like, yeah, dude, yeah, dude, I'll do whatever you want. So I get back down the trash, and I hear the two girls' footsteps when they roll action here. And I pop up. But this time, everything that was in here is not there. Just all wet behind. You know what I mean? Just, so I pop out like this. stage 